Have you ever had thoughts about the spiritual world? What does the Bible teach about this subject? The greatest deception of all times comes through spiritualism, and the nearer we get to the end of time, the more frequent will be the occurrence. Why? Because the enemy of man know that he has but a short time. I pray that you will be enlightened through this lecture by Francois. I've just come out of a museum at Athens where I saw fantastic finds of ancient Greece. Let me share with you what I saw. Just look at this. This world of ours has seen great artists. I challenge modern sculptors to use the same primitive tools these people used and produce the same quality of art. When you read about these ancient civilizations, you discover that they worshipped different kinds of idols made of wood and stone. For years, this strange practice puzzled me. What is so exciting about worshipping lifeless objects? How could these ancients actually bow down and worship a sculpture? This is the golden death mask of Agamemnon. In Greek legend, he was king of Mycenae and the leader of the Greeks in the Trojan Wars. In his days, people worshipped images of stone and wood and gold. The mystery as to why people worshipped these idols was solved when I discovered that voices spoke from these objects to the worshippers. Strange voices came from these Mesocorinthian and Procorinthian oil containers when people worshipped them. Come with me to the ruins of Baalbek in Lebanon. People flocked here in their thousands to worship the gods of antiquity. They bowed down in reverence before these shrines and heard strange voices speaking to them. The religion of these pagans appealed mostly to their senses. When they heard these supernatural voices, they danced and got emotionally all worked up, says this Lebanese guide. And of course, there were plenty of male and female prostitutes to add to the licentious character of these worship services. The cruel enemy, the devil, destroyed millions of these worshippers through these debasing religious practices. Do you think he has relinquished this successful method of destroying people? No. He only changed the name of the game. Jesus tells us that millions of people will one day be lost because they allowed the devil to deceive them. Let's read it. Matthew 7.22 Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Verse 23 Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. When I visited the ancient city of Byblos in northern Lebanon, I came across this pagan trinity. The Canaanites worshipped these stones while strange voices spoke through them. The worshippers thought they were friendly voices, but they were not. In actual fact, they were destroying voices. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. There is only one safe course to follow. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are safe only when we listen to what he tells us. Obedience is always the safest option. John 14 verse 11 Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. In this lecture, we're going to look at the modern manifestation of an ancient witchcraft called spiritualism. Today, they are the fastest growing church in the world. What do they teach? And what does the Bible say about them? The progressive thinker, May 18, 1929, published this article. It removes all fear of death, which is really the portal to the spirit world. It teaches that death is not the cessation of life, but mere change of condition. Spiritualism is God's message to mortals, declaring, There is no death. Those all who have passed on still live. That there is hope in the life beyond for the most sinful. 
that every soul will progress through the ages to heights sublime and glorious, where God is love and love is God. It sounds so good on the uninformed ear, but it conveys a note of warning to the Bible student. If you listen very carefully, you will hear the familiar voice of the serpent. Spiritualism teaches that a person is conscious in death. They declare that there is no death and that the most sinful person will never get lost. It sounds so good on our sinful ears, but watch out, be careful. Let's ask the Bible, the only reliable source in the whole world, to tell us whether the dead can really communicate with the living. Job 14.21 If his sons are honoured, he does not know it. If they are brought low, he does not see it. Can the dead make contact with the living? The Bible says no. This is my child when she was still very small. Spiritualism teaches that should I die, I will still have contact with her. It's a fantastic comforting thought, but the Bible says it's not true. Whether she becomes famous or infamous, I will not know it. The Bible is very clear on this issue. There is no consciousness in death. I prefer to believe what the Bible says. When I die, I sleep and perceive nothing. The dead makes no contact with the living. When King David lost a child, he said the following, But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23 Before we delve deeper into God's word to find answers to our questions, let's have a quick look at the origin of modern spiritualism. Come with me to a specific place in America and let's read the words on the plaque, it says. The home of the Fox sisters, through whose mediumship communication with the spirit world was established March 31, 1848. There is no death, there are no dead. This is an echo of a voice which spoke the following words to Eve many centuries ago. Genesis 3 verse 4 You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. I'm quoting from McClintock and Strong's Encyclopedia regarding the origin of modern spiritualism. In the month of January 1848, the noise assumed the character of distinct knockings at night in the bedrooms, sounding sometimes as from the cellar below and resembling the hammering of a shoemaker. The knocks produced a tremendous motion in the furniture and even in the floor. The children, Margaret age 12 and Kate 9, felt something heavy as of a dog lie on their feet when in bed and Kate felt as it were a cold hand passed over her face. Sometimes the bedclothes were pulled off. Chairs and the dining table were moved from their places. Raps were made on the doors as they stood close to them but on suddenly opening them no one was visible. On the night of March 31, 1848, the knocking was unusually loud, whereupon Mr. Fox tried the sashes to see if they were shaken by the wind. Kate observed that the knockings in the room exactly answered the rattle made by her father with a sash. Thereupon she snapped with her fingers and exclaimed, Here, old Splitfoot, do as I do. The rap followed. This at once arrested the mother's attention. Count ten, she said. Ten strokes. Her oldest Kate, nine strokes. And Margaret, twelve strokes. When she asked if he was a man, no answer. Was it a spirit? It rapped. Numbers of questions were put to the spirit which replied by Knox that it was that of a travelling tradesman, Charles Rosman who had been murdered by the then-tenant John C. Bell for his property. The peddler had never been seen afterwards, and on the floor being dug up, the remains of a human body were found. Within three years after this incident, modern spiritualism had 30,000 followers. 
Today they number millions upon millions. It has spread like wildfire all over the world. Followers and believers in spiritualism come out of the rank of scientists, writers, clergymen and politicians. The writer of the Sherlock Holmes books, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, for instance, was a spiritualist. Please be careful what you read. The man on this slide, Sir Oliver Lodge, was a great scientist. He said he saw his son who died during the First World War often coming home and playing the piano accordion. You know, we should be very careful as to what kind of literature we read. Let me tell you why. At times, a spiritualistic guide will actually hold the author's hand and write the messages. I once met a man who had this very same experience. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5 says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and even the memory of them is forgotten. Reverend A.J. Callahan, S.J., is quoted in the Western Watchman, a Catholic publication, of March 12, 1920. The dead can come back to life, but only through God's extraordinary permission. There are cases where a dead mother has come to a wandering boy, but always for the best of reasons and for the boy's welfare. Job 14, 10 to 12 says, But man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As water disappears from the sea, or the river bed becomes parched and dry, so man lies down and does not rise till the heavens are no more. Men will not wake or be roused from their sleep. Dean of Weldon of Durham at a congress at the Church of England said, Spiritualism has come to fill a void in the church practice because of the coldness of the old services. This was cited in Current Opinion, December 1919, page 317. The noted Dr. Russell H. Conwell, pastor of the Baptist Temple in Philadelphia, believed that his deceased wife held converse with him on several occasions. Dr. Isaac Funk quotes the Warcraft November 27, 1897, to the effect that General Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, spoke of regular communication with his dead wife. Spiritualism says, There is no death, there are no dead. Can you hear the voice of the serpent, Genesis 3, 4, where he says, But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. Genesis 2, 15-17 The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. In the following few slides, we shall watch the process of materialization. This word simply means that the spirit takes on a form. We are going to look at one of the devil's greatest deceptions. The medium in this cubicle is in ecstasy or a trance. Watch out for this kind of phenomenon. A cloudy pillar of ectoplasm flows from the medium and rises to the height of a full-grown woman. Here you can see how the ectoplasm becomes denser, more solid, until the form of a mature woman can be seen. Look at this lifting up of hands. Her name is Silver Bell, an Indian girl who is the spirit guide of the medium. Do you realize that you are actually looking at a demon that transformed himself into this image? Isaiah 8 verse 19 says, When men tell you to consult mediums and spirits who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God, why consult the dead on behalf of the living? If you watch closely, you will notice that someone is holding the right hand of this medium. At the same time, the ectoplasm causes the trumpet to float.
This man is allowed to handle the ectoplasm that causes the trumpet to float. Strange voices of spirits are heard coming from the trumpet. Job 7 verses 9 and 10 As the cloud fades and vanishes, so he who goes down to Sheol, that's the grave, does not come up. He returns no more to his house, nor does his place know him anymore. This is an ordinary photo of Edgar Wallace. As you will recall, he is the author of the book Ben-Hur. Would you like to see how the devil imitates him? This is a materialization of Edgar Wallace. I want to tell you that the devil is powerful. We need to live so close to the Lord. We need to obey all his precepts, otherwise the devil is going to mislead us. Revelation 16.14 says, They are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Job 14.10-12 But a man dies and is laid low, man breathes his last, and where is he? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and dries up, so man lies down and rises not again, till the heavens are no more, he will not awake or be roused out of his sleep. If people would only believe what the Bible says, they will never be deceived by the enemy. When man dies, the Bible says he knows nothing. He sleeps till the second coming of Jesus and only then will he be resurrected from death. This is an infrared photo. Just look at this table floating in mid-air. People like the sensational. Beware of it. Religion teaches self-denial, not sensual enjoyment. The ectoplasm comes from his mouth and buttonhole and sustains two trumpets. Watch out for the ecstatic experience in religious meetings. Strange voices are heard from the trumpets. The devil is a cunning foe. The medium on this picture has his jacket on and is tied to the chair with ropes. Eight seconds later he is out of his jacket with the ropes in the same position. Ten seconds later the jacket is in the process of coming back. Somebody unseen is dressing him. Fourteen seconds later the jacket is back in its original position. These literal ropes not only bind this man, the devil has also tied him with ropes of deception. Both hands of this medium are held. Can you see it? But there is another hand in the background. This is the hand of an evil spirit. What do we call it? We call it materialization. I'm quoting from Banner of Light, June 4, 1864. Question. Have you ever seen Confucius or Zoroaster? Answer. Yes, many times. Question. In the order of degree, which stands higher in moral excellence, Jesus or Zoroaster? Answer, Confucius stands in morality higher than the other two. Jesus himself claimed to have been inspired by Confucius. So, they place Confucius above Christ. Do you know of any such spirit as a person we call the devil? Answer, we certainly do. And yet the same devil is our God, our Father. This also comes from the banner of light. What an acknowledgement. May God help us to shun this soul-destroying practice. Let us seek him with all our hearts and obey all his precepts. If we only go according to what our eyes perceive, we will be deceived. Our only safe God is the word of God. Spiritualism says the dead are not really dead. The Bible says, no, when you die, you are unconscious. Psalms 146 verse 4 When the spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that day, their plans come to nothing. Listen to the following serious warning from Matthew 24, 24. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. Revelation 13 verses 13 and 14 
tells us about the demonic deceptions of the last days. And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast, who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Be wary of anything supernatural, especially when it comes in the form of religion. Beware of the phenomenon of ESP, extrasensory perception. The enemy can use it to achieve his devilish plans. Even if spiritualists say the dead can contact the living and prove it to you, do not believe them. The devil appears in the seances and imitates the departed loved ones. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 6 Their love, their hate and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. Genesis 3.19 By the sweat of your brow will you eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are and to dust you will return. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol, the grave to which you are going. Job 7 verse 10 He returns no more to his house, nor does his place know him any more. Spiritualism is a satanic deception. Spiritualism also teaches that there are degrees in death. By the way, the expression that one is in the seventh heaven is a spiritualistic concept. They say that when you die, you begin progressing from one heaven to the next. But what does the Bible say? Job 3 verses 17 to 19 There the wicked ceases from troubling, and there the weary are at rest. There the prisoners are at ease together. They hear not the voice of the taskmaster. The small and the great are there, and the slave is free from his master. Death is the great equalizer. You may hold a very important position in this life, but when you die, you are no higher than the lowliest bundle of bones in the cemetery. Job 19.25 says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. No one can disturb you when you sleep in death. You cannot be called up in a seance to appear before people. Stay away from these seances. You're not making contact with a departed loved one, but with one of the many evil angels who imitates a loved one. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 The Spirit clearly says that in the later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Deuteronomy 18 verses 10 and 11 Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium, or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Verse 12. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord, and because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. Leviticus 20 verse 26. You shall be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy and have separated you from the people that you should be mine. A man or a woman who is a medium or a wizard spiritualist shall be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus 19 verse 31 Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. In his book, Spiritualistic Madness, page 26, Dr. Forbes Winslow, lecturer on mental diseases, writes, 
I could quote many instances where men of the highest ability have, so to speak, neglected all and followed the doctrines of spiritualism, only to end their days in a lunatic asylum. Isaiah 8 verse 19, When men tell you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Isaiah 8 verse 20, To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Please make use of your Bible more often. There is only one safe norm to consult and that is the word of God. And never rely on your impressions or your emotions. They may deceive you, but God's word will never let you down. Psalms 119 verse 11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Genesis 3 verse 5, For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. How very sad, when Adam and Eve disbelieved God's word and listened to the serpent, they lost everything. When the devil said this to Eve, he was contradicting what God said. Today millions upon millions believe the devil's lie. They believe you don't die when you die. How sad. John 8 verse 44 You belong to your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Because Adam and Eve believed the lie the devil told them, they not only died eventually, but they also became slaves to their new master. If it was not for Jesus who came and died for us, we would all be lost for eternity. Psalms 119 verse 11 I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Please cling to God's word. It's your only safety. Listen to these words of warning. Let it be once and clearly and fully known that these dear ones on the other side of life ruin and desolate homes. They drive men and women to destruction and then to the madhouse. That they undermine religious faith and confidence and that in a thousand instances they bring about an utter weariness and detestation of the duties of the present life. I have, during the last ten years, spent much time in answering the inquiries of persons whose lives have been shipwrecked by spiritualistic practices, and it is upon painful facts and incontrovertible evidence that I base my conclusions and opinions. By the way, this was written by Jeffrey Rupert, KSG, a Catholic specialist on spiritualism. In the New York Daily Tribune of October 22, 1888, Kate Fox is quoted. She condemns spiritualism as an absolute falsehood from start to finish. She said it could be regarded as the worst degree of blasphemy this world has ever seen. Kate, of course, was one of the founders of modern spiritualism. It is so dangerous to believe the lie that Satan spoke to the first two people on earth. He's going to repeat this lie till the end of time. If you believe him, he's going to deceive you and destroy you. Stay away from the seances. Stay away from every meeting where the immortality of the soul is propagated. Evil angels are present in these meetings and they take control of those present. There are spirits of devils working miracles. This comes from Revelation chapter 16 verse 14. The false Christ will soon make his appearance in these meetings and tell the world that he changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. How do I know? During one of Mary's so-called apparitions, appearances, she told a farmer to worship on Sunday. It is safe to believe what Jesus taught when he referred to his deceased friend Lazarus. He says, Lazarus is dead, he sleeps. And if you sleep, you will wake up, either to receive the gift of eternal life or to receive the punishment 
that is eternal death. Life can only be found in Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Because of Adam's sin, we are all condemned to perish. But God comes with a gracious life-giving offer, his Son, Jesus Christ. If you and I accept his gracious offer of salvation by faith, we will never perish, but live forevermore. May God help us to make use of this genuine offer of life and love. Friends, there is wisdom and safety in the teachings of the Bible. If we allow the Bible to educate us, even on this subject, we cannot be deceived. Please close your eyes for prayer. Dear Lord, help us not to fall prey to Satan's deceptions, but to test all teachings against your word. Thank you for giving clear biblical answers to the questions on spiritualism. We accept you as our great mentor. Amen.